Welcome in to Seahawks Today, powered by Chat Sports. Today's show is presented by Aura, the all-in-one digital safety company. We'll tell you more about what they do coming up later in the show. You can sign up now for a free 14-day trial at Aura.com slash Chat Sports. Today's show is a trade rumors mailbag. I asked you earlier in the week to send in your trade ideas, and so we'll break those down piece by piece. But before we do... It is like a video a month on YouTube, and I have been told that if you don't like today's video, that must mean you hate puppies. I mean, so that's just simply how it is. That's what I've been told. Don't shoot the messenger. But apparently, if you don't like today's video, that means you hate puppies. So please, don't hate. I love dogs. I know you love dogs, too. Even if you're a cat person, like today's video, or else you hate puppies, and we'll get started with today's show. And it looks like we have a cat avatar to begin things. How about that? First question comes from Jace Hartford. Jace wants to know, I think if the Seahawks want to win it all this year, getting Jimmy G is a good mover. But because the roster is still pretty bad, I don't think he would make us a playoff contender. So then that's like six to nine wins. Nice. Which doesn't allow us to get a quarterback in the draft. Thoughts? All right. So there's a few things to dissect. Let's break this down piece by piece with the idea of Garoppolo going to Seattle here. First off, you talk about bringing in Jimmy G with the idea of making the Seahawks try to compete for a Super Bowl. Uh, Newsflash, the Seahawks team isn't competing for a Super Bowl. Um, They could have Tom Brady as their quarterback next year, and this team's not a Super Bowl contender. Patrick Mahomes, any of those guys. This roster's got a lot of work. So, no, Jimmy G, credit where credit's due. He's won a lot of big games. He's played in the Super Bowl, played in multiple NFC title games. But, no, he would not be the difference in this team playing for the Super Bowl. Could be the difference potentially in this team making the playoffs or not. But Super Bowl contender, no. So let's get that out of the way first. And then the other part of this of if they should make a move, if it would hurt their draft status. Here's what I would say. I would not fear the idea of bringing Garoppolo or any other quarterback, for that matter, because of your idea of how it could hurt you getting a quarterback in the upcoming draft. Because essentially what happens is the very foundational pieces of the draft, of what makes the draft work, is that when it comes to quarterbacks in particular, you draft a guy that you fall in love with that you're willing to invest your franchise in. And if Seattle were to win too many games where they weren't in the top three and didn't have their first pick, then you look at it and say, okay, is there a guy we're in love with that we can't live without that we're willing to trade up to get? You can always move back up if there's that quarterback that you can't live without that might not be in position where you're at. So I don't fear winning. You should never fear winning. Now, I don't like the idea necessarily of trading for Garoppolo, giving up draft capital for a guy that more than likely could be caught here in a few weeks, but this whole idea of being afraid to win by bringing in Garoppolo, I'm not buying that. But good question there from Jace. Next question uh, comes from uh, Popolis. Uh, That's a mouthful there. Hetchapopolis. Shout out producer Jeremy for uh, the English on that one. What could be Seattle's next trade? Well, I think that it is – there's two different things. As far as what they're looking for, I think a trade for a quarterback could be happening soon, like a Baker Mayfield or Jimmy G or somebody of that magnitude, Gardner Minshew, a quarterback trade. But the most likely player to be traded in-house that they'll look to send off will be LJ Collier. Collier competing just to make a roster spot at this point in time. I think that – management by not giving Collier that fifth-year option has already signaled they're ready to move on. So, to me, those are the two things. I think it's what they're looking for as a quarterback. What is the first piece to move on is probably LJ Collier. Now, I want to know from you guys, our pin comment today, name a player you want the Seahawks to trade for. Give me a name out there, anybody that you think the Seahawks should pursue. You're about to get an ad break, take advantage of it. While the ad's playing, Get your votes in and let me know one way or the other one player you think the Seahawks should trade for. All right, this is one of my favorite usernames that we get questions from here on the channel. 
trying to judge your engine by your paint job, wants to know, trade Sidney Jones for whatever we can get, third or fourth rounder, and maybe Kobe Bryant the start and make Kobe Bryant the starter. So, Kobe Bryant, we talked about him earlier in the week, getting a lot of love, and there's a possibility that he could be starting at one of those cornerback spots. Sidney Jones, you brought back, and clearly the team is going to move on from Sidney Jones at some point down the road. He's, he's just a plug-and-play type guy. I don't know if you can get a third or fourth round pick for Sidney Jones. Um, I get the sentiment of wanting to trade him, but that might be – asking too much. I don't know if if it's really possible to get a third or fourth for a guy like Sidney Jones necessarily. But nonetheless, I do like the idea of giving Kobe Bryant more playing time. He's passed every eye test so far to this point. Going to be exciting to see what he does in training camp at this point. Today's show is presented by Aura, the all-in-one digital safety company that provide financial fraud protection, identity theft protection, online and device security and the best part about it is they protect you and your loved ones family plans to protect five people whether you own a shop bank work online you can do it more safely and privately you know i had a situation a few years ago went to one of the big box stores my card got compromised and i didn't find out till months after the fact if i had aura i would have found out and known it right away and taken care of things so don't be like me and not have Aura like I did. Thankfully, I have Aura now, and I'm in great shape. So sign up now and experience all that Aura has to offer. Protect you and the ones you love now. And just for my Seahawks Today viewers, you're going to get a free 14-day trial if you sign up at Aura.com slash chat sports. That's Aura.com slash chat sports. Next question uh, comes from the best, wants to know. Seahawks trade LJ Collier for a seventh and uh, also uh, Cleveland Farrell, the uh, Raiders uh, defensive player. Uh, Cleveland Farrell has been a guy that has disappointed. Former first-round pick, came out of Clemson, and – you know, at the time, we were saying that Mike Mayock and the Raiders had reached on Farrell. And now they've been shopping him and looking around. And you look at L.J. Collier, some of the same stuff that we've said about Farrell, you could apply to Collier here. Another former first-round pick that has not panned out, that's not getting that fifth-year option. I have more hope about Farrell than I do about Collier. Um, I'd make that trade and get a seventh-round pick. That all sounds nice, but I don't think it's realistic. I don't think you're getting Farrell and a seventh-round pick giving up L.J. Collier. It sounds like a good idea, but it's one of those things that it's not realistic. Look, a lot of pressure on L.J. Collier. A lot of pressure on Farrell this year, too, quite frankly. Both guys in prove-it years at this point in time. Um, Maybe could use a change of scenery. I see where you're going at with that, but – uh, that, that one might be a little bit of a reach. But Farrell, I think, has potential. Um, but something's got to click. Something's got to change for him. I don't know if I can say the same thing about LJ Collier. I don't know if we're ever going to see LJ take that next step and become the player that he was projected to be coming out of college at a TCU. Now, you may be asking yourself, Tyler, how do I get involved in these mailbags that you do each and every week? Well, You know how? By subscribing to the channel. These mailbags are subscriber-only mailbags. So go to the Community tab and subscribe now, youtube.com slash Seahawks TV, and you can submit your questions each and every week. We pick the best ones. We put them on the air. It's, it's, It's that simple. That's how it works. So subscribe now if you haven't already. Get your questions in. Turn on those notifications so you never miss a moment. And you very well could be right back here next week on the Seahawks mailbag. Our next question comes from Slick Rick. Slick Rick wants to know, should the Seahawks trade for a wide receiver? Well, let's let's start by looking at the Seahawks depth chart right now when it comes to the wide receiver position. DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, one and two, coming off really good seasons in 2021. Metcalf, of course, looking to get paid. Lockett, is 29 years old now, four years remaining on his contract. Uh, then there's Freddie Swain, 
Goodwin, Hart, Estridge, uh, you know, there, there's a really good group of guys all competing for that next number three receiver spot for the Seahawks there. Now, look, I could see why some of you might point to and say maybe there's a need for that number three receiver. But personally, I think that somebody from that group is going to develop. That my hope is that it's D. Eskridge, that he's the guy that turns into that number three receiver. But whether it's Goodwin or Eskridge or Swain, somebody is going to come along and turn into a pretty decent number three receiver. That's where I feel. So the Seahawks have a lot of needs on their roster, but wide receiver making a change there is not a priority for me. I think this is actually one of the better position groups that the Seahawks have, quite frankly. But nonetheless, thanks for the question. Let me know what you guys think. Should the Seahawks make a move for a wide receiver? Let me know in the comments section. Why for yes, in for no, if you think they should make a move one way or the other. That's why for yes, in for no. Last one from Bob Bacon. I love me some bacon. Should the Seahawks trade next year's first round pick? For what? <laughs> I mean, let's start there. What, what, what should they trade it for? Now, as I mentioned at the top of the show, if you were telling me, okay, maybe to move up in the draft and find a player you like, okay, we can talk there. But just trade it just to trade it. Look, I know that the Rams changed the game, right? When the Rams traded all those draft picks and their GM said F them picks and it turned into a Super Bowl, all of a sudden everybody thinks that the game plan has changed that you don't need draft picks to win a Super Bowl. Well, you're wrong. The LA Rams were in Los Angeles playing in a brand new stadium and an owner that wanted to spend a, a, a hell of a lot of money. Okay? Not everybody could do what the Rams did. That was an anomaly. Okay? So, with that said, I'm not just trading a first-round pick just to do it. You have to have something that you're getting of decent value, and I don't know what that is. So, Bob, I, I appreciate the question. But, I mean, what are you going to get? That's, I, that's what I got to know. Got to be a big deal. You don't trade it just to trade it. You trade it with the hopes of getting something of value that's of significance. So, simple as that. But thanks for the question, Bob. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at Tyler Jones Live as uh, I am talking about the Seahawks and the rest of the NFL all the time over there. Also on Instagram at Tyler Jones Live as well. Hope you have a great rest of your weekend. We'll see you next time here on Seahawks Today.